Hey, I want to tell you how I won the offer on my own house as a realtor, because I think it's relevant and may be able to help you in the process. Because I have a lot of experience, it's a little bit easier for me when I'm offering on my own homes to be strong or to really understand the value. Uh, but I really think there's things that you can learn from the way that I make offers that might help you. Uh, my name is Jonathan Green. I run a big real estate team on market called Streamline Properties on Market, brokered by eXp Realty. I've also been an off-market investor for more than 30 years. Uh, I've made offers on hundreds of homes in my career. I also have a background as a trial attorney, so I negotiated every single day for eight years or up to 10 years, actually, on the other side. So I understand what goes into making offers, but I also understand that the way that I present them and the way that I stick to my offers is important to me in terms of reputation. So I moved actually, uh, I have lived in the New Jersey area for about 10 years. I lived in um, Verona for two, Montclair for six, West Orange for two. And then I moved out to Morris County where I live in Mendham, New Jersey. And this is the house that I'm gonna explain to you how I offer. Uh, I think my house was listed for around 500, um, something like that when it came on the market. Uh, the market was a little bit soft when I came in. There were definitely hotter parts of it, but my house is, is close to Main Street. So that works for me because I wanted to be in an area that uh, where I could you know, walk to the town if I wanted to. Um, and it had some, some things about the house that really worked for me that might not work for other people. I'm also able to have a vision of a home of what I want to do long term where I can remove walls or things that I can do and where real value is at. So I wasn't expecting it to get a ton of bids, but so I made my offer of 550 based on looking at the comps and the scalable value in the neighborhood. But the most important thing that I did in this is they were expecting multiple offers, but in my experience as a listing agent, sometimes that doesn't happen. So part of my offer was 550. And even if they don't get multiple offers, I'm gonna leave my offer as it is. Turned out they didn't get multiple offers, so I'm technically 50,000 over uh, asking price, but this is New Jersey, everything sells high, Mendham's a great area, I knew the value, it was fine, that was the value to me. I guarantee you that if someone were else to be put in this situation and then went back on their word, it's just that karmic presence of real estate that multiple offers would come in. I didn't want to mess around. And again, because I'm licensed, I know I'm also gonna get the commission. So when I pay a little more, I also know I'm gonna get a certain amount back. And that also gives me leverage that I've basically, I've lived up to my word, even though somebody else might've said, hey, you didn't get any other offers, let's go back to 500. I did not. And then when we got into inspection, I ended up getting uh, another about 10,000 to just resolve all repairs. The family before me was just leaving, ready to get out. So uh, the anomalies that we found, we just took credit. Uh, so when you take that and my commission on the transaction, I really ended up getting the house for 525, which is just a huge value for this area where I live in. Uh, what I wanted to explain is that there's lots of things that you can do in an offer that aren't going to break your back. And part of it is just sticking to the word of what you can do. I don't think that you need to waive appraisal or waive inspections. We use an inspection limiting contingency, but it's just kind of the way that you present an offer and the way that you present yourself outside of, you know, love letters, which are frowned upon now. It's just, are you going to present things in a way? And then when you say you're going to limit inspections, are you really going to do it? Um, and I think, you may not think that's going to affect anything because you're going to buy one house every seven to 10 years. So your reputation is not at stake. Things happen in real estate transactions. There's people creeping up behind you trying to buy the house, backup offers. So if you fumble as a buyer, a lot of times a seller has somebody to go to. So it's something to keep in mind. thought you might be able to get a little bit of uh, maybe idea uh, of what else you can do. Um, I like that as part of the offer. In these hot markets, it's very rare that any nice homes will not get multiple offers. If you do find quirky houses like I like, there are gonna be times where it's just maybe the layout's not gonna work for someone or they're not seeing something that you see. Um, my house is an oddity. It's a, it's a three bedroom, two bath in the front, but there's also a garage with a back house, one bed, one bath on top, which has obviously lots of potential. Um, so 
Sometimes you can see more than other people and sometimes you just act quicker than others. So it's best to make sure you have a great real estate agent so they stay ahead of the curve. They're making sure that you understand these little things that you can do to get your offer accepted. And this is how I won my offer on my house the last time that I bid and the house that I'm currently in as a realtor. Have a great day.